Uh, hello everyone, this is Master Guy Channel here. Today we're going to be going through quadratic functions. So um, here in its general form, f of x equals x squared. Uh, so now if we search it up here, f of x equals x squared, you see this, okay, so this is the shape. So it's raised to the power 2, unlike the linear function. And it gives this distinct curve nature here, uh, where th even when you have a negative number, and all the y values here are positive because when you square a negative number, you get a positive value back. So minus times minus is positive, so on. Okay, so this next form here, f of x equals x squared plus bx plus c, is the generalized form. Uh, and this is for this is general form for any quadratic function. Uh, so here we can observe, for example, this is set up. The gradient here is set up one, and when we increase it, it gets further. It gets it gets skinnier, skinnier. Whereas, likewise, uh, when it's negative, the graph flips, but as the number increases, it is 10. It also uh, it gets skinnier and skinnier. Um, between 0 and 1, negative 0, you see that it, get, it approaches a, it gets skinnier and skinnier. It gets lighter. And when a is 0, the x squared is made redundant, and hence it becomes a linear function. Uh, so let's set this back up 1. So the c value here, c value. It's just a constant moving up and down, as per usual. Uh, the B, you can see here. So the graph is still going through the C, the C uh, value here at one. But like the intercepts, so the solutions for when for the parabola when x equals zero differs based on the B. Okay, let's leave that like that. All right. So these two here. So this is just some properties of perfect squares. So when you have something in the form ax squared plus or minus 2ab plus b squared it becomes a plus minus b all squared like that. Uh, this is the difference of perfect squares where a squared minus b squared gives you a minus b times a plus b. So an example of that would be, let's say for example, we substitute f of x equals x equals x squared minus 2 squared. And then looking at this format here, a minus b, so a is x in this case, and b is 2, and we have two solutions here, at negative 2 and 2 respectively. Okay, um, so this question here, one way we can solve it is through trial and error, working out, okay, what numbers, what factors, what, what numbers multiply to get me negative 6 and add to get negative 1 in front of the x here, and that is negative 3 and 2. Uh, we can also complete the square, so starting with the form x squared plus bx plus c, and making x a subject, eventually you get the quadratic formula, we can put any a, b, and c values in, and it will always spit out a solution. Um, for this to work, it relies on the what's called the discriminant, which is the uh, what's underneath the third here, b squared minus 4ac. So if this if the value inside the third is greater than zero, then there are two real solutions, so there are two intercepts. If it's equal to zero, there is one solution, one x intercept, and if it's less than zero, then there are no solutions. Uh, so let's say for example, here. Um, so here we have two solutions here. Now we have one, now we have none. Let's just an analogy of that. Um, so these are, so this is another form of showing it, a, a times x minus h squared plus k. This is a turning point form. Let's say for example, we use, we'll keep a as one, x minus 1 squared plus 1. So here, this tells you the coordinates of the turning point here. So the h, k, of, this is the turning point, this is the x-intercept form, which tells you the x-intercepts of the coordinates. So we'll keep x of that. So hence, we have the two uh, solutions here. An x, when x minus 1 is 0, x is 1. When x plus 1 is 0, x is minus 1. We also get that here. Um, and to find the midpoint of these, so sometimes you don't have simple numbers, you take the, you find the average of the two points, so you get x1 plus x2, go by 2, and you get the x on the intercept. Um, so depending on what, uh, depending on what properties you have for the parabola, you can use each formula. So this is if you have the turning point, so this formula here. Um, it's like, for example, when you have this coordinate. Uh, this only here is when you have the x-intercepts. 
two x intercepts and another point. And if you only have three random points, then always use the standard formula. Um, yeah. To look at, when you're looking at the properties of a parabola, keep in mind that you need to look for the y-intercepts, the x-intercepts, the turning point, the axis of symmetry. So like here, in this case, it would be here. But if I change change the numbers a bit, okay, here. So the the axis of symmetry is at x equals one. Here, where it cuts the parabola perfectly in half. Um, and the endpoints, if it that has restrictions, if there are restrictions to the graph, um, and yeah. That'll be it.